Today we're going to cover the day in the life of a dermatologist who's on hospital consults. I was on hospital consults a few weeks ago and I want to kind of show you what it's like to go into the hospital to do a consultation for a specialty that generally tries to avoid the hospital at all costs. So this is what it's like to do a hospital consultation for a dermatologist, why we do them, what the goal is, and kind of what that process looks like. So if you're interested in dermatology or just curious about the day in the life of a dermatologist, you can know what that might look like for a skincare doctor. One of the reasons that I love dermatology is because I get to work in a clinic from an eight to five or nine to five type job. It allows me plenty of flexibility to do things outside of work that I love doing, spending time with my family, exercise, or pursuing other hobbies. However, as a dermatologist, I do understand the way that the internal organs and health affect the skin. And because of that, many dermatologists, myself included, will be on call with the local hospital from time to time. And when a patient comes in with a really bad rash or with other you know, cutaneous or skin manifestations of internal disease, we may get called in to help provide diagnostic support or treatment recommendations. And today is one of those days for me. So I'm on call with the local hospital system and got a phone call. It's the day after Thanksgiving giving and I'm going to be going into the hospital to do a consultation. That means I'll go to the hospital, I'll look at the computer system and check out the records of the patient, understand what is going on with them before they came into the hospital, what brought them into the hospital, what kind of medications that they are on, um, other underlying skin or uh, metabolic diseases that they have if they're diabetic um, or have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, you know, what medicines are they on? Did they start new medications recently? So all of those things I'm trained to, you know, read into to determine if that is having a role in why the patient is presenting with a rash or some other skin problem. So today we're going to see a patient with a rash to help make a diagnosis and to then provide treatment recommendations. We may be doing a biopsy when we see the patient and we're not going to be showing the patient. Of course, I'm not going to tell you a lot about them, but I want you to follow along with me today and kind of understand what the process is of doing inpatient consults as an outpatient specialty like dermatology. So come on, let's go check it out. All right, so we've just made it to the hospital and I'm gonna be going in to see the patient and to do the rest of the work that I need to do there. But here's some of the things that I take with me when I go to do a consultation that help me to make the right diagnosis and may help me to just better examine the patient. So one of the first things that I'll take into any patient encounter is something called a dermatoscope. And this is my dermatoscope. This is like the stethoscope that a cardiologist would use, but this is like my stethoscope. I, I would be lost without this thing. This one provides light, so it shines light. It's polarized light, so you don't get a reflection off the surface of the skin. And then it has a magnification in there. And that magnification just allows you to really identify the features of either a rash or a mole or a skin cancer or not. Now, we don't get called to the hospital to tell them if something is skin cancer, but this can just provide light for me. And there's certain rash patterns where you can kind of see the way the blood vessels are changing in the skin to help you make a diagnosis. And one area that this really comes in handy is in the fingernail. So when we look at where the cuticle grows from, there's certain nail changes that will help us identify autoimmune skin conditions like dermatomyositis or lupus or scleroderma. And those can be really helpful to see with the use of a dermatoscope. Another tool that I take into the hospital that I don't necessarily use in the clinic all that much is just a flashlight. So I have just a simple little flashlight that I'll take into the hospital because the lighting is often, you know, not very good in the hospital. Those hospital rooms are not made to be examination rooms. And so they're, the lighting might be off, the patient may not want the lights on, and I need to be able to see better to know what kind of rash I'm looking at. So I do always take in just a little simple flashlight. This is a rechargeable one to help me see what I'm doing. The next thing that I carry into any patient encounter in the hospital is just this little tackle box. This is a simple little toolkit or tackle box. I got it from a hardware store and you know it's clean when I bought it and I keep in here um, all the things that I need if I were to do a biopsy on a patient. So before I go into the hospital to see a patient I usually go to my office and pick up some of the materials that I think I might need if I were to do a biopsy. Of course bringing a mask with me because it's still pandemic and then I bring medicine that I can numb a patient up with. 
um, alcohol swabs as well to clean the skin prior to any procedure. I bring tools with me like this. This is a punch tool to take a small sample of skin so that I can send it to a pathologist to make a diagnosis as to what's going on underneath the skin. Once we take that biopsy, I have to put it in a bottle and send it to the lab, and that's where these little bottles come in handy. I bring two different types with me. One is a standard biopsy bottle, and another is called Michelle's Medium, and this is for a special test called immunofluorescence testing, where instead of looking at what are the cells doing under the microscope, they're trying to look at what is the immune system doing. Are we seeing an autoimmune attack in the skin? This uses fluorescent markers to identify antibodies that may be in the skin attacking the skin or other structures of the skin that might be consistent with autoimmune skin disease, which is one of the things we do commonly get called to the hospital for. If I'm coming to the hospital, I need the tools in order to do a biopsy. So there's a sterile kit here with a needle driver and pickups so that I can put a stitch in after I take the biopsy. I do bring stitches here and then bandages and sterile gauze and everything else that I might need for a simple procedure like taking a biopsy. And then the last thing that I bring with me in my toolkit is just a headlamp. So if I'm doing a procedure and I need both my hands, you know, because I'm gloved up, I can't necessarily hold my flashlight very well and nursing short staff, you know, there could be other reasons why I can't get a hand. And so having a headlamp makes it really easy to give me the light that I need while I'm doing a procedure. So knowing all of those things, let's go into the hospital and I'm gonna perform my consultation and give you guys an update. Once I've arrived at the hospital, then I'm going to gather all my things. You kind of saw what that looked like. We're gonna walk over to the hospital. I usually just go in the back door because then I don't have to walk through any waiting rooms or patient areas. And I always take the stairs. I don't like to um, take the elevator, even though this consult was up on the sixth floor. So it was lots of stairs to get all the way up there. Uh, the first thing that I do once I get up onto the floor is I find the patient room and then find the nearest nurse station and I always try to go to do the consults when there's not gonna be a staffing change. So hopefully the nurse has been there long enough that they're not just barely meeting the patient. Uh, I like to introduce myself to the nurse and just let them know um, who I am uh, because they're usually not used to seeing me in the hospital. Then I jump on the computer system and almost without exception, it's been a while since I've been in the hospital, so I have to go ahead and call IT and reset my password. So that always takes about another 20 minutes. And then once I've got into the computer system, then I go ahead and I look up the patient data, their information, their labs, uh, kind of their presenting case, um, anything detail-wise that I didn't get from the phone call with the admitting physician, whether that was the hospitalist or the emergency room staff. Once I've got kind of the patient story all together, then I'll go in and see the patient. Of course, we're not gonna show any of that here in the video because of privacy laws. So once I'm there, I go in and I talk to the patient, I do a history and just ask all the questions, even if they were already answered in previous notes from other doctors, because I want to make sure that I understand the story. And there's definitely gonna be things that I ask pertaining from a dermatologist perspective that maybe weren't covered in the emergency room or maybe weren't covered by the hospitalist team. So then I'm gonna do my examination. We wanna see wherever the problem is. You know, a lot of times in the hospital, we're going to be dealing with a rash. That's one of the most common things that we get called in for. And we're particularly trying to rule out things like Stevens-Johnson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrolysis or other skin conditions that might actually be life-threatening. Most commonly, we're going to see very normal drug reactions that are very itchy for the patient. They may look really scary, but they generally are not life-threatening. So we want to do a full skin examination. We want to look from head to toe. We want to look at the extremities, everything on the trunk. We always want to check um, the buttocks, the groin, because certain rashes are or are not going to show up there. We want to look at the palms and the soles because certain rashes may appear on the palms and the soles, but most rashes won't. So if we see something on the palms and soles of the feet, that kind of puts us down a whole different pathway of what the diagnosis might be and what treatments we might need to evaluate with the patient. We also want to look at the mucous membrane. So whenever I'm evaluating a patient in the hospital for a rash, I'm gonna pull down the eyelids, look on the inside of the conjunctiva. We're gonna have them open their mouth and look for any rash or skin sloughing on the mucosal inside the mouth. We're gonna talk about uh, pain or burning with urination and perhaps even do a genital exam if it's warranted because if they're having mucous membrane involvement, so eyes, mouth, or genitalia, 
that again puts us down a whole different pathway of potential diseases that can be a lot more serious. Once we've done the history and the physical examination in the patient's hospital room, at that point we have to make a decision whether a biopsy is warranted or not. If a biopsy is warranted, we'll get the patient to consent to that procedure, uh, whether if they're able to or if they have a guardian that can consent for them. And then we'll identify the area that we need to take a tissue sample from. We'll take that, we'll send it to the lab, and it usually will take two to five days to get those results back, just depending on, you know, if it's a weekend, if it's a holiday, you know, nighttime, daytime, all of that makes a difference if we have to do a stat rush order um, to get a diagnosis back. So that is something that we do frequently on hospital consultations is do a punch biopsy. We'll often take a regular punch biopsy called an H&E biopsy to look at under the microscope and then perhaps something called a direct immunofluorescence biopsy. So that's where we'll take a biopsy but it's put in a different liquid to preserve the immune system. So we're going to be looking at what do the antibodies in the skin look like? Are they attacking the skin in certain ways? Because that might tip us off towards certain autoimmune type conditions. And those results again take two to five days to go away. So whether we biopsy or not, we then have to start making treatment decisions with the patient if we're going to put them on any therapy. The most common therapies we're going to use are things like topical steroids, sometimes oral or intravenous steroids going through their IV to help reduce itching, to make them comfortable, and also to alleviate the intense, you know, redness, inflammation of the disorder. Once we make that decision and inform the patient, then I always go and talk to the nurse and give them a verbal as to what I'm going to be doing for the patient so that they understand just in case for some reason my note's not clear or there's any lack of communication between doctors, which notoriously happens um, in medicine in general. So once I've done all of that and gotten my samples off down to the lab, then I will go ahead and sit down at the computer system and type up a note, which will of course have all of my history um, review of systems. It will have my physical examination, what I found, pertinent positives and negatives. So for example, again, if I check the hands and feet, I wanna make sure that I note whether they were clear or not. So just because I didn't see something on the hands or feet, uh, I need to document that because that will tell the next person that looks at the chart that yes, I did look and no, it was not present. So they don't need to start thinking about certain types of rashes. And then I go ahead and make my assessment. The assessment is what I think is actually going on, what I'm calling the disease. And that you know may be something as you know bland as exanthem, which is kind of a non-specific way to say rash. Um, it could be viral exanthem. I could put down drug reaction. Um, I may say, you know, viral exanthem versus drug reaction or psoriasis versus eczema. Usually those don't look quite the same, but we'll kind of put in our differential diagnosis as to what we suspect the diagnosis to be, um, whether we made that clinical diagnosis or whether we're waiting for biopsy results to come back to confirm that diagnosis. Then um, we'll go ahead and put in our treatment recommendations. So if I wanted to start the patient on steroids, whether it's topical or oral or give them antihistamines or lotion at the bedside, I'll put that all in the note and kind of write it out. And then I actually have to go into the computer system and place orders. And that's what actually gets sent to the in-house pharmacy to get ready for the patient so that it can be brought up and administered to the patient by the nursing staff or left at the patient's bedside if that's appropriate. And so I go through all of those steps, go ahead and sign my note. At that point, I can log out of the computer system. And then I always leave my cell phone number in the chart so the doctors can get a hold of me if they have any need for clarification or if the patient status changes. Now, as a consultant dermatologist, there may be times where I need to see that patient daily while they're in the hospital, but oftentimes a dermatology consult is sufficient as a one-time event uh, to help outline a treatment plan so that the patient can then be started on that and they'll follow up with this as an outpatient in a discharge situation. Once I'm done with the consultation, then I'm gonna go ahead and pack everything up and I'm gonna leave the hospital all the way back down all those flights of stairs back to my vehicle and usually that whole process takes between one and two hours to get done and uh, then we wait for the next time we get a call. All right, so we finished up the consult. Thankfully, did not have to do a biopsy. It just takes more time and the patient wasn't in a condition that required a biopsy to be taken. The diagnosis was pretty straightforward and we were able to provide some help to make the patient more comfortable, contribute to their prognosis, their diagnosis, hopefully get them out of the hospital a little bit faster. So all 
although dermatologists don't have to go to the hospital very frequently, when we do go, our goal is to help, of course, make a better diagnosis, uh, get the right treatment there, and shorten the length of stay that the patient is going to have to be in the hospital so they can stay comfortable and get home a little bit sooner. And then hopefully we can follow up in the office to continue to manage a condition if it is a chronic condition. So that's kind of what it's like to do a consult in the hospital. So that's what it's like to be a consultant dermatologist. I'm thankful to be in a community where lots of dermatologists take calls. So I don't have to go into the hospital very often, but it does promote unique challenges, different disorders we're tending to see in the hospital versus in the clinic. So it's kind of a fun way to exercise the brain and to kind of go back and look for more serious, more rare things that are more likely to present in the hospital versus in the clinic. Overall, I do enjoy working in the clinic a lot more than going into the hospital, but being a consultant dermatologist is an important part of serving the community and reaching out to the you know hospitalist physicians taking care of the patients that are coming in there who may not easily have access to a dermatologist and are certainly in a moment where they need more acute dermatology care if you guys have other questions about day in the life of a dermatologist or what it's like to be a derm um, or do consultations in the hospital make sure to ask them down in the comments below and i'll answer them for you and provide future content around those topics. So I look forward to seeing you guys back on the next video.